From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. You put this in your mouth and it is just zippy. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. I have an anonymous email here. No signature. No clue as to this woman's name. She writes, Hi, Tom. I have a situation. I would like to get your <laughs> output on this. And I'll put she has the two separate words. Out. Put. I am a 28-year-old female who is in a relationship with a man. But have feelings for an ex. I'm reading verbatim here. Have feelings for an ex of which I have been seeing and spending much of my time with. I think that's one preposition too many. Comma. The problem <laughs> is my ex is married. I would like to think things would be different if he was not married or got a divorce. Comma. I am not in love with my boyfriend... I like to think I was, but time apart that we have had has distanced myself, and I've grown feelings for my ex again, which I know might be wrong. But do you think anything could come of this? It's signed anonymous. So let me uh, plow through this bad grammar and dangling participles and... Uh, prepositions at the end of what should be the end of sentences, but the way she gets around the preposition being at the end of a sentence just puts a comma and just keeps on with the run-on sentence, which keeps going. So technically, the preposition is not the end of the sentence. So she's 28, she's in a relationship with a guy, but she has feelings for an ex who she's been seeing and spending much of her time with. And the ex is married. And she would like to think that things would be different if he was not married or got a divorce. Well, I know you'd like to think things would be different. and I'd like to think the tooth fairy would come along if I have any more teeth to stick under my pillow. I'd like to think that. <laughs> that reminds me of a commercial I once did for an insurance company. They said they had the lowest prices, and I know they didn't have the lowest prices. So when I read the commercial, I said they like to think they have the lowest prices, and nobody even noticed. The commercial ran for years. <laughs> I don't have to name the company. Just trust me when I tell you. So she says she's not in love with her boyfriend. Why do you have how? Wait, this is the part, and you know maybe somebody listening can can explain this to me. This is the part I don't understand. How can you say you're in a relationship, but you're not in love with your boyfriend? What exactly does that mean? I'm in a relationship, she says in the first line. In the second line, she says, I'm not in love with my boyfriend. I'd like to think I was, but time apart that we have had has distanced myself, and I've grown feelings for my ex again. Which I know may be wrong, but do you think anything could come of this? Well, let me just say this. Number one, your ex is married. And you are conveniently located, and uh, presumably you're giving him what he wants. Presumably, uh, you know, he gets a few hours away from the old ball and chain, and you do the old in and out with him, and then that's it. Presumably. Okay. And uh, it, it's perfect situation for him because you're in a relationship. I mean, my favorite to when somebody's in a relationship and they, they just want to see me, you know, when they have time. Am I jealous of the boyfriend or the husband? Absolutely not. You know what? Uh, I'm just there to fill those lonely hours or to provide some entertainment. That's what I'm there for. I'm not into drama. I'm not into going in and stealing somebody away or anything like that. I'll just borrow her during the hours when she's available. And then I'll send her back to you. And you, you schmuck, you can continue paying the rent or the mortgage. You can pay the utilities. You can buy her the lovely clothes that she wears when she goes out with me. You can do that. I'm fine with it. 
And clearly, you're not enough for her for one reason or another. You're not in town enough. You're not around enough. You work too many hours, whatever it is you do. So she fulfills my need to have a no-strings-attached situation where uh, we can hang out and we can have honest conversations and she can tell me all about her problems with her with her boyfriend or her husband, depending on who the person is. And then when uh, when he needs her attention on holidays, when he needs her attention to like go on vacation or go on the road or uh, visit him wherever he's going to school or whatever he's doing, fine, she goes. But uh, when you hang out with your ex-boyfriend who's married to somebody else, it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. You are deluding yourself. How many of you are in a situation like this? You're in a marriage that's going nowhere, or it's sex-free or whatever. You're in a relationship that you're like this woman, saying, well, I'm in a relationship, but I'm not in love. And there you are, you're seeing an ex, having sex with an ex, chit-chatting with an ex, sending text messages to an ex, instant messages... You're emailing each other, you're buzzing each other, you're calling each other on your super secret cell phones, whatever. And somehow deluding yourself into believing that, that that's a relationship. I mean, none of this stuff makes sense to me. I, I'm out of the drama business. I am out of the worrying if someone is in love with me business. And you want to know something? It's entirely possible that somebody who is living with someone or married to someone else could quote-unquote be in love with me. It's possible. And just because they say they're in love with me or think they're in love with me doesn't mean they have to go through some big dramatic catharsis in their lives. They don't have to come home and have that big confrontation with the boyfriend or the husband. They don't have to come home and say, I'm leaving you because I'm in love with someone else. I'm in love with Tom Likers. <laughs> you don't have to do that. You know what? I am perfectly happy with you spending all the major holidays with him. And then when you've got time for me, come on over. We'll spend a little time. It's fine with me. You know, if things don't work out ultimately with the big galoof, uh, maybe someday we'll spend more time together. Right now, uh, I'm getting what I need. You're getting what you need. And and everybody's the, the everybody's nobody's the wiser and everybody's happy. This idea that you're well, I'm with my boyfriend, but I'm not in love with him. I mean, what is that? Please, somebody explain this to me. Tom Likis. 1-800-5800-TOM. Likis. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likis Show. Here's the Tom Likis Show. With the shortest breaks we've ever had. More phone calls. We take them faster. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Dino came in here during the break. Told he had a guy on the line who said he had the trigger cock is ready to kill himself. And of course, we had to wait until the break was over before we could talk to him. And now he's, now he's hung up. Dean says he thinks the guy probably pulled the trigger. No. Duty called. Nothing else we could do. So if you haven't killed yourself yet, please call back. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jesse in Portland, Oregon. Home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. You know it. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm engaged to this girl. We've uh, been going out for about a year. <laughs> so... She's been keeping in touch with one of her ex-boyfriends. Uh, <laughs> I really, I, I really hate the guy. But at first, Why do you, you know, hate him? What's that? Why do you hate him? You should hate her. Oh, uh, he's just a punk ass. No, he's not. He's doing what any guy would do. And you want to know something? I've done the exact same thing he's doing. <laughs> and you know why I do it? What because women like your girl make it possible. Yep. And why in the world would you want to marry somebody like that? Oh, I'm not anymore. Oh, you just said you're engaged. Are you engaged? We are, but 
you know, hearing this subject probably got me uh, changed my mind on this. Really? Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I I want let me yo Jesse, well, let me help you out here. I, uh, you know, I've been a very bad boy over the years, and I've been very honest about it. And I have been with women like your fiance, <laughs> who amazingly would call me up and tell me about the problems they're having with, like, you. Let's say I dated her. Let me tell you what those conversations are like. Or let me, let, let's me let say that she was calling me or texting me or whatever. Let me tell you how those conversations go. So uh, you're, you're engaged to her, and I'm seeing her at the same time. She's not only she's not only telling me I oh I can't do anything I'm engaged and then has a couple of drinks with me and then she's doing things she said she would never do. On top of that, she's telling me all the intimate details of your relationship. Everything. Okay. All right, so there's a man out there who not only knows her intimately from the past, but he knows every time you've had sex, every time you didn't have sex, he knows all of your shortcomings, whatever those are. Ever had an argument or a fight? He knows about it. He knows everything. You think you have an intimate relationship with someone, and there's another interloper out there who knows as much or maybe even more about what your girl thinks than you do. Yeah. So my question to you, having been him... The other guy is, by the way, and I'm sure some of the women I've done this with are listening today. So I want them to hear what I'm about to say. Why would you marry somebody with such low character? Well, I'm not anymore. <laughs> well, why don't we call her right now? Uh, let's not. Oh, come on. Step it up. We'll call her right now. We'll tell her. Uh, I'll tell her on my own terms, man. <laughs> I don't think you're sure you're going to do this yet. I think you're still thinking about it. <laughs> right? Well, maybe you're right. Uh, you don't have to lie to me. Pussy. You don't have to lie to me. You would marry somebody who on the side is telling somebody else, you know, how well endowed you're not? The things you won't do in bed? The things they used to do in bed that you don't do with her? Mm. Oh, yeah. Every argument you've had. That time you got drunk and called her the C word or whatever it is you called her when you were drunk and you had a big fight about it. There she is calling right now. She's clearly a listener. That was her, wasn't it? Yep. Hello? <laughs> Hello? That was her. There she is again. No, that's uh, my work. Okay. Uh-huh. Right. The, the well, fact, uh, okay. but the fact is, you, you, here's the thing. You're going you're gonna to marry a woman, and you're going to give her your last name and half of everything you own, and she's going to continue telling this guy everything about you. And, and, the, and you know what the guy is saying on the phone? I know you're not happy. That's what he's saying to her. I know you're not happy. That's why you call me. Because yeah. you're not happy. And she's like, well, you shouldn't say that. You know, he's, he is a good guy. I mean, I do love him uh, in his way. You know, he's, uh, you know, I mean, we've had our problem. Yeah, like what? Well, you know, <laughs> remember that thing you used to do to me? He doesn't want to do that. That's what the conversations are like. If you think they're just sitting there talking about the price of a cup of coffee at Starbucks, guess again. Yeah. I've had this conversation. Oh, I'm not spread. I've dated women like your fiance. You know what? They have, and this is the other thing, and I'm not joking, I'm not saying this to instigate you in any way. You have a more intimate relationship with the guy you're seeing on the side than with the guy you have an emotional investment with. Yeah, I will tell you, I will tell you that I have had more intimacy, and I'm not talking about sex, though I've had sex too. But in terms of just talking, I've had more intimacy with women 
who had boyfriends and husbands, fiancés, than I have with women who were involved with me. And that's what she has with him. All right, well, you've opened up my eyes, like always. All right, well, have a great wedding. Well, take me out Bill O'Reilly's so. house. <laughs> okay, here you go. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! F*** it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Uh, f***ing thing sucks! It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Uh, let's say hello here to Will on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Well, hey, listen, um, I have to totally agree with you on this subject just because I have an ex who keeps texting me, myspacing me, calling me, and I was like, oh, she's in a relationship. Obviously, she's not happy, and she wants to get back together with me. You know what I told her, Dad? Tell me. I told her he could you could hit the street. You could hit the road. I don't have time for you. I just started my own business. I'm finally making money. You're not taking it. And we already, already did this with you before. Why in the in my right mind would I want to do it again? Do you understand what I'm saying, Dad? <laughs> yes, son, I do. Right on. Well hey. But so guy, so what now is she involved with somebody else? She is involved with someone else. And I don't think you like, you know, I don't care. You know, because, hey, it's his loss. You know, I already went through it, and I know he's in a world of hurt. That's why I won't go back. Unbelievable. So it's, it's unbelievable. That, I mean, she, she myspaces me. She just says, I'm unhappy with this guy. And I'm just like, leave him. Leave well, him here's the thing happy. I don't understand. And there's one woman in particular, and she knows who she is, and I know she listens. And she's listening right now. There's one woman who would not, was was not interested in continuing whatever our relationship could have been or was as it was because some other guy jumped right in and said what I wouldn't say. I love you. <laughs> so she bailed on me, and then not only that, she told me, don't ever call me again. Don't ever call me. Uh, don't call me anymore. Okay. Uh, don't write me. Don't call me. It's not fair to him. Don't do this. Later, when things went sour, she started calling me, and not only started calling me, but asking me for advice about him. <laughs> why is he treating me like this? Like, you, why, why are you asking me this question? You dump me for him, then you call me to ask me why he's being like this? What a bitch, Tom. What a bitch. Wow! I just don't understand. I just told her flat out, and she was like, well, I'm thinking about moving back home with my mom, and I'll be closer to you. And I'm like, lose my number. I don't want to deal with anything Ugh. for your life. You know, she had two children, and then she lost them to Child Protective Services. You know, this was, I went out with her for two years, four years ago, and then I started listening to you. And the whole reason I dumped her was because of you. And there's no way in hell I'm jumping back into that. And I'm not in time for a relationship. I start my own business. Like I said, I'm making good money now. I'm getting more ass than I ever had before because of you, Tom. So I want to say thank you very much, my man. Thank you. And with, with that said, can you take me out African tribal style, followed by a bomb rip? Yes, Will. Here you go. Baninge, 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 sopenza. Baninge, baninge. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Here's Oscar on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How am I doing? Great. Good, good. No, I just got a little, a little story to share. You know, for all the guys out there with, like, the guy that just called by the sex. That, um, I mean, yeah, you know, the, I mean, actually, the girl that he's with, and that she's talking to her ex or whatever. You know, um, I had an ex that actually, you know, I was a pussy back when I was with her. I used to, you know, act like a. Like, you know, like all in love, and it was like high school times, uh, you know, take her out, and just, you know, when she wanted to break up with me in the end, I was trying to, like, you know, change her mind or whatever, it didn't happen, and, um, you know, whatever, she got with this other guy I used to actually be friends with, 
And um, she ended up, you know, getting knocked out by him. Um, he got engaged or whatever. Never talked to her again until after she had the kid a month afterwards. She she wanted to get back with me right after she had the kid. And, uh, you know, I was like, what? And just because, you know, I was kind of mad about her and being with that guy, I actually, you know, kicked it with her a couple times and, you know, did what I, you know, what she wanted to do. And, and then after that, I just kicked it back to the curb just to, you know, let her know what a piece of crap she is. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, dude. <laughs> I have to admit, I've done stuff like that, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, come on over here. We'll talk about the problems you're having out there. Yeah, come on over. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know, like, she left. She will leave her kid with, like, her mom, and the guy will be out, like, you know, with his bike or whatever, and then she'll be coming over to my house to uh, spend the night. <laughs> <laughs> twice, though. Only twice after that, I kicked her to the curb, let her know she's a piece of trash, and... I just wanted to use her one more time. Yeah. Well, there's no doubt she's a piece of trash. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8666. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Well, what is it with people who are in a relationship, but they're always chit-chatting with their ex? What's that all about? Are you one of those? <laughs> it's one 800 800 tom Patty on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 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 Hi. I was listening uh, to your caller who had called, and my situation is almost the same, but it's, re well, with me. My ex and I, we've been separated for four years, and he's had relationships. He moved out of state. I live in California. He moved out of state, comes to California to visit, calls me all the time. And mind you, we're going on five years separated. Calls me all the time. And we have a and son you together. and you take all his calls. Uh, well, we have a son together. I actually I don't take his calls. I had a <laughs> I don't take his calls. I let him leave messages. I had a call Verizon and have them stop. A, I can't I can't take texts because he'll be on dates and he texts me, and he's crazy. He is crazy. I don't really have, I, on occasion, I mean, I used to, like, call him when he used to call me because he used to tell me he would cry and what have you, and I just couldn't deal with it anymore. Now, he, when he used to call me and tell me he's going to kill himself, I used to get all frantic, he used to call him and what have you. Now, it's like, pay your life insurance if you're going to kill yourself because your son needs to be well, taken he would, care of. But, yeah, but if he committed suicide, not one penny would be paid. I'm sorry? Oh, I know. I know that. Pay, I know that pay, pay your life insurance. But, but his, but his, um, his, uh, all the other monies that he has would go to my son, like all of his properties and with everything, because it's his only child. So you're hoping he will pull the trigger? Well, I'm not hoping that because I don't wish that upon anybody. But uh, the sympathy doesn't work. I mean, it, it used to get me all upset and and what have you, and and now it's like. Whatever. I you cry wolf, okay. If you're gonna kill yourself, kill yourself. No big deal. I I've, I've had it. I've had it. And I actually um I guess he was gonna kill me because um I guess it was on the scanner that some I'm not gonna say his name, but his name came on the scanner and then my name came on the scanner and I had like five people call me. On what scanner? On scan on the police scanners. Your name is on a police scanner? Why? Because his name came on the scanner and it said possible suicide, and I was like, and this was on Father's Day, and I had no idea I was going to a party. I was making pots of, uh, uh, potato salad, and I got these phone calls saying, "Girlfriend said, oh my God, I just heard your name on the scanner, and I heard his name on the scanner, and it said something about a possible suicide." And he told, me, well, I've actually told the police because he's a nut. If he kills me. If I should oh, wake up dead... If... Uh, I want to kill myself just listening to you. Uh, There's a possible suicide down here at the studio. Anyone with the sound of my voice? Just spent two minutes and 41 seconds listening to that. No wonder he wants to kill himself. 
one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Sal. Now, when Sal called, he was at the drive-through at Del Taco. I imagine you've moved on by now, Sal. Oh yeah, it was a uh, Taco Tuesday night, so I must go down real quick. Taco you know? Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Dad. Hello, Sal. Um, I'm in a predicament here. Um, a predicament, yes. Yeah, I really do. Um, I'm seeing this girl. Um, she works for my the same company I do, only up north. Um, and I just found out that she is married. And um, you just found out. Well, I just found. Well, not recently, but probably like about a month ago, I found out. So you I, banged her first, and then you found out she was married. Yeah. <laughs> Love those long distance relationships. Yeah, well, you know, she flies over here, you know, I mean for the day sometimes just she'll just fly over here and Yeah, because she works for your company. Yeah, and what's nuts is like I do things to her that her husband can't even imagine to do. That's I mean, why that's why she contacts you. I mean, terrible things. They should be illegal. I mean, I took off my belt one day and put it around her neck like a dog collar. Really? And, yeah. And she, That's some I mean, company you guys work for. Um, Just a moving company. We just move people <laughs> from here to there. And this is what you guys are doing when you're not moving us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Very um, nice. And, but it's kind of crazy because, like, I don't even have to spit any game to her at all or anything like that. Well, I mean, all I have to do is just nod my head yes and no, you know, when it comes to her problems and stuff like that. And she basically thinks I'm paying attention to her. And and I then mean, you get uh, and then you get all the benefits. I get all the benefits. Yeah, definitely. Um, my conscience, it, it, it sometimes it comes into play, like, you know, what if somebody did that to me and stuff, but... There's a reason why she's coming over to this side of town, you know? <laughs> well, I always say that until that one time, I'll never forget, I was in San Francisco with an ex. Okay, this is an ex relationship. Mm -hmm. I was there for the weekend, and uh, my voicemail went off, and I got paged, and I uh, dialed in to get my voicemail. And uh, I got this phone call. It was great. Now, I know I'm going to press the filter button. It's not going to work the way it used to, but uh, we're trying to simulate the sound of a of an incoming call. And it went like this. Hey, Tom, you know who this is? This is Dave, you know, Jennifer's husband. Yeah, well, I found out what you two are up to, and you better not come to town, pal, because I'm going to beat the crap out of you. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a big man on campus till that phone rings. <laughs> and that's not even the half the part. I I, uh, I got a girlfriend down here also. Oh, really? And you know what's the crazy part? She just texted me and she's just telling me right now that she's hearing this, this your show right now. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to have to take the strap over there. <laughs> So now I gotta deal with that drama as soon as I hang up with you and stuff. You'll but, be cracking um, her ass in about two hours. <laughs> so I don't know if she's gonna be pissed. What or... did she say in her text? What'd she just say? She just said, "I just I'm listening to you right now on on the Tom Michael show. Is that you?" <laughs> and yeah, it yeah, is. It is you. Yeah. It is you, and you're the one cracking the ass and tying the belt around the neck of the chick from up north. That's you. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it's not something that, like, I made it happen like this. You know, I had the girl. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I'm you just did. horny. Huh? I'm just horny. What do you want? What well, I, I say, understand you know? that. And your girl well, doesn't like having the belt tied around her neck. No, she doesn't. So, She's well, not really into all that. Well, now stuff. she knows that uh, if she wants to keep you happy, uh, it's going to have to involve the belt. Right. The belt. I mean, I, 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 I'm like sitting there. I, I hold my belt every now and then. I'm like playing with it, like just thinking of all these other girls that I want to do that to. Like, which one of these girls are, are into that kind of stuff? Is this a leather fetish or just a belt fetish? No, she. It was like I put her around her neck like a like a dog collar. That's what she had a dog collar fetish. She wanted me just like to yank her around and. Did you walk her around the room and stuff? 
<laughs> uh, kind of. I kind of walked her around the bed and, you know, put her in these weird different positions and choked her a little bit. A lot of it. She loved to get choked. That was weird. That was freaky. That almost scared me. Like, I was going to get And is that because she went number one on the carpet or something and you had to pull, a, pull the bell? Yeah. <laughs> she went number one. <laughs> <Whoa>! <laughs> Uh, we're gonna, we're <laughs> Very nice. Well, I'm hey, glad Dad, we're, uh, yes. since we're in the subject, can you take me out Lacey Peterson style with the bomb hit? <laughs> yeah, yes, I can. Ember. Hey. Ember. Ember, make you up it's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. What is it with people who they're they're in a relationship, but they say things like, "Well, I'm not in love with my boyfriend, uh, but my ex. You know, we've been talking a lot lately. We've been hanging out, and you know, we went on a couple of dates. And I'm wondering if this could go anywhere. It's like." You know, you're with one person, but you're also secretly dating your ex. Well, what is that all about? Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8255. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show coming to you from Hollywood. And one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Thank you for joining in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. People who are in a relationship but continuing to diddle around with their ex. What is that all about, Andrea? On the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, um, just want to tell you a bit about me and my situation. Um, I used to see this guy for three years. We broke up. He immediately got with my closest friends. And a year and a half later... He's still calling. He's still texting, and yeah. <laughs> well, it was all about sex. It was. It, it's always all been all about sex for him. You understand that, right? No, I understand that. But the thing is, um, we don't have sex, or and you know. But and that's he would like to have sex. It's just that you haven't given in yet. Oh, oh, and I don't think I will. And I just don't understand. You know, like you said, what's the point of being with? Yeah, but by else? responding to him. I'm sorry. What was that? By responding to him, you're sending him a mixed message. That's another thing. Um, you know, like I do respond to his calls um, and text messages once in a while. And you, sh if you really are serious about what you're telling me, that you uh -huh. you'll, you won't have sex with him, uh -huh. you would never respond. Um, I don't know because I I really don't. The last time, honestly, I had sex with him was over a year ago. Every time you respond, you give him hope that you will give in. The thing is, though, um, he himself tells me. That you know he he's not looking for that. I don't and, care what he tells you. Yeah, it was always all about sex, and it still is. Mm, I just don't understand why. Um, I'm assuming he's getting sex from his girlfriend. But I, you can, but you can never get enough. I mean, you understand how it is to be a guy. True. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we're getting it, but it's yeah. even better if we can get it from more than one source. Yeah, I just, I don't know, I guess I just don't see why he's trying so hard to get it with but, me, like... But if you, but the thing is, again, you're sending a mixed message, even to me, okay? Because yeah. if you really don't intend to have sex with him, you wouldn't, you wouldn't worry about why he wants to do it. You would just not respond. True, I guess. You're right. <laughs> I think at some point you're going to give in. Um, I don't know, it's been over a year and I don't really have the urge to see him or anything like right that. now but uh, whoever you're dating you'll be lonely you'll be feeling sorry for yourself one night he'll <laughs> he'll, he'll pepper you it'll be like all those uh, requests you get in the mail to buy the los angeles times or to subscribe to, to time magazine or whatever you know uh, you'll get a hundred of them and one day you'll respond to one of them. yeah <laughs> and that's what you're doing you're keeping him in your bullpen that's what you're doing whether you want to admit it or not Oh, man. Because if you're serious, here's what you do. Don't ever talk to him again. Uh-huh. And he'll go away eventually. No, see, no, see that's another thing. You I'm haven't like... stopped 
respond. Okay, check this out, Tom. Like a while ago, maybe um, it was probably recently after we broke up. I had no contact with him whatsoever for about maybe six months. You know, like he would call me all the time, to text me, and for you know, like half a year, I had no contact with him. Because he really had a new about- because he had a new girlfriend, and he was uh, laying pipe with her about four or five times a day. <laughs> And then when the bloom was off the rose, and suddenly it wasn't four or five times a day, maybe it was four or five times a week, and suddenly he used some of his free time to start contacting you again. I don't know. I just have this weird feeling, like with him. It, I have you ever? Like, let me let me let me put it to you this way: um, Have you ever been with a guy who keeps copies of like Maxim or Playboy magazine under his bed or in his room? No. <laughs> you ever heard of guys doing that? Um. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Right, and what they do sometimes is they got all these magazines, and they can't wait till the new one arrives, you know, until they got the pages all gummed up and stuff. Mm-hmm. But then, every now and then, you reach under the bed for like, you know, October two thousand three. Yeah, yeah, you know what? She was pretty good. <laughs> and so you reach under the bed, and suddenly you're gumming up the pages of two thousand three again. Yeah. Right, uh, guys are no different with live women. Okay, mm-hmm. it was really hot with you for a while, like back in September 2003 when the October 03 issue came out. Oh, she was the hottest thing on two legs until the November issue came out, and then uh, Miss October went under the bed. <laughs> it's the same with live bodies. Yeah. Okay. Sure, he's got a girlfriend, but guess what? He's had a little too much of her. Suddenly so reaches under the bed for an old issue, and there you are in the centerfold. The thing is, though, like what I don't—I guess what I don't understand is like, okay, I understand. You know, he has a new girlfriend. He's maybe trying to get sex from me. I don't know. Who knows? If he's so tired of his old girlfriend to call me and complain about how much he doesn't like her, why? I don't understand why someone would waste their time. What do you mean waste their time? If you put out, he hasn't wasted his time. No, I mean, like, him, for him. Like, I don't understand. You know, like I said, he calls me and tells me how there's so many things about this girl he doesn't like. And it's, to me, it just seems that so- That I'll agree with you. That people say that stuff, like in this letter I received. Well, uh-huh. I have a boyfriend, but I'm not really in love with him. Not in love with him anymore. Yeah. And, and, and those people are the people who always have to be in a relationship. Yeah, like, I don't understand that. Like, this guy is 21 years old. Like, why? And, you know, me too. Like, I'm young as hell. I'm 20. And, you know, I guess, like, I finally realized, and that's why I broke up with him, that I'm so young to be in a relationship. Right. I just I just don't understand, like, what, what he do, why he doesn't understand that himself. You why know? do you worry about it? And the reason is because eventually you're going to give in and have sex with him. Um, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Because, I uh, trust me. The ones I have no intention of having sex with anymore, I don't talk to them anymore. Yeah, I guess. I don't. I don't know. I guess, like, the temptation's there, I guess. Like you said, I don't know. I'm, I've seen other people than him, like, since we broke up. And I guess it's it kind of, like, it's easy, like, to keep that option open just in case, you know. Like, one day, like you said, I do get lonely or whatever. You're You're going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I hope not, but... Uh, I know you hope not, but I know you're going to do it. Melissa, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. I just turned 18 this year, started dating this year, and I've dated three guys, and three, all three of them cheated on me. Can you tell me what I'm doing wrong? Well, please? first of all, you're 18. Uh, Why are you trying to have a serious relationship? I'm not trying to have a serious relationship. I'm just trying to have a relationship where somebody just cheated on me. But, but the point is, that's a serious relationship. Monogamy is a serious relationship. Relationship, okay. That's a relationship. Okay. I don't know. That's just what everybody's always talking about, relationship. Monogamy, is that's not what I'm supposed to be doing right now? You're 18. Okay. Yeah. I just, I'm just calling so you can give it to me straight, Tom. I love how you give, everybody, give it to everybody straight, and I want you to give it to me. So go ahead. And by, by the way, do you date these guys? Or you just have sex with them. What happened? What kind of dates are you on with these guys? I'm just going out, you know, having a good time, movies, bowling, miniature golf. And it always ends up in sex. No, no, it doesn't. I'm a, I'm a virgin. You're a virgin? 
Yes. Darling, that's why they're cheating on you. Really? Of course. Great. No, the, no man is having a relationship if he's not having sex. It's not a relationship. All right. I was hoping that wasn't the answer, but... That's the answer. All right. Well, what do you think? I mean, this isn't the 18th century, darling. This is this is the 21st century. 21st century. Right? Yeah, it is. I mean, what makes you think guys are going to wait around for you? You know, that they tell you there's... If he loves you, he'll wait. Who told you that? The Bible? Your your like uh, religion class? Yeah. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Well, they're wrong. Yeah. Which religion are we talking about here? Catholicism. Catholicism. Yeah, they know a lot about love. The priests who are diddling the altar boys. Uh, priests who never get married. What do they know about love and relationships? They think it's supposed to last forever. What do they know about love and relationships if priests and nuns never have any? Great point. Great point. Maybe if they went out on a date, they'd find out what the real world is like. Maybe. I agree with you. And out here in the real world, if you're not having sex with us, it isn't a relationship. You're our pal! That's true. Yeah. So it's not just those three who've cheated on you. It's everybody you're ever going to know who has a penis. All of them? Every single one. All right. So I either give it up or... Well, you know, uh, d d do what the older boys do. Give it up. Give it up. That's right. right. You got to give it up, darling. Give it up. Yeah, either you give it up or you're going to be the friend. And I don't want to be the friend. You're going to be the friend. And you're getting your dating advice from eunuchs and people who've only had sex with 13-year-old boys. You've got to give it up. you got okay. to give it up. Give it up. All right. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, darling. Our email address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.